America, the UK and France launch an assault on Syria in response to an alleged chemical attack in eastern Ghouta. The strikes were carried out without UN approval and just hours before international investigators arrived at the scene. Russia's foreign minister says the kind of poison Sergei Skripal and his daughter were exposed to in the UK may have been misidentified. And tensions run high near the French city of Nantes, where squatters and police have clashed throughout the week over forced evictions. Well, as we can see behind us, the CRS and the police have come into another saddest point. This is a point where a couple of dozen people were trying to hold off. As you can see, the police are pushing them away. A warm welcome. I'm Nikki Aaron, and you're watching The Weekly here on RT International. All the day's headlines and the stories that shaped the week. Top story this hour. In the early hours of Saturday morning, American, British and French forces pounded Syria with missile and airstrikes. The attack came in response to allegations that the Syrian government used chemical weapons against civilians, claims which an international watchdog is still to investigate. As for Donald Trump, in his first tweet after the attack, he thanked the U.S. allies and said the result could not have been better. Trump called the strikes perfectly executed. And that's despite Syrian and Russian militaries saying that most of the missiles had been intercepted by defense systems. A perfectly executed strike. If we've learned one thing from Trump's tenure so far, it's that he feels he can do as he pleases. This week's strikes on Syria are a textbook example of how far this can go. To batter a sovereign country with over a hundred retaliatory missiles in response to a chemical attack, you'd have to be a hundred percent sure that that attack happened. Instead, America's <coughs> conviction was built basically on an online video and sources. This conclusion is based on descriptions of the attack in multiple media sources. The reported symptoms experienced by victims, videos and images showing two assessed barrel bombs from the attack and reliable information indicating coordination between Syrian military officials before the attack. Well, my colleague Ken Delanian and I have learned today that the U.S. now Very has good. blood yeah. and urine samples from some of the victims of this, this uh, attack in Syria last weekend and that those samples, according to U.S. officials, tested positive for chemicals. Toxin samples, verified witness and victim accounts provided by a UN-backed chemical organization would have served as rock-solid proof. But Trump apparently figured, why bother? Launching the strikes just hours before the OPCW probe on the ground was scheduled to start. Experts are bound to proceed with the investigation anyway, but in the face of the strikes, they are presented with an additional challenge now holding up the very relevance of the probe. Another obligation for an attack of this kind, UN approval. But that's not a chapter of international law for Trump, just a nuisance. It is my duty to remind member states that there is an obligation, particularly when dealing with matters of peace and security, to act consistently with the Charter of the United Nations and with international law in general. The UN Charter is very clear on these issues. But even with the UN brushed aside, the US Congress has to give the green light for the attack. On paper, it turns out, the Defense Secretary's promise to run the decision with the lawmakers was empty. It is hard to find a legal justification for that military strike in Syria absent congressional approval. So whatever you decide to do, I would hope you would include the legislative branch. We will be reporting to Congress and finally, allies. In ideal circumstances, they'd be rallying en masse beside Washington, unleashing their joint wrath on the enemy. 
This time, most U.S. partners, while giving their verbal support, have sought to avoid complicity. We must say, as we Italians always have, that if we need a long-term solution to the Syrian crisis, we not only need to respond to crimes, but first of all work towards peace. Germany will not take part in possible military action. I want to make it clear again that there are no decisions. But we see and support this that everything is being done to send a signal that this use of chemical weapons is not acceptable. None of the formal boxes checked, but the mission is accomplished, ignoring all the illegalities and almost deliberately rushing headlong into war, Trump has once again shown the only right way is his way. We spoke to Virginia Senator Richard Black, who told us that Congress, if asked, would never have approved a strike on Syria. The Congress would not. Once, once the people had an opportunity to to uh, have a voice, there is no way that they would have approved an attack on Syria. If you tried to prosecute Syria for this in a legitimate court of law, you could never get a conviction. I will tell you, I'm a prosecutor. We do not know whether chemicals were used or whether this was just a fabrication. And if they were used, we have no earthly idea who used them. Um, but we do know just logically there was no motive whatsoever for uh, Syria to do it. First of all, they had conquered Jaish al-Islam in Duma. They were leaving, they were finished. The war was, the, the battle for Duma was over. And so the idea that at that precise point, uh, gas would be fired is, is, is childishly absurd. Well, Russia slammed the U.S.-led strikes on Syria as an act of aggression and called an emergency U.N. Security Council meeting. At the meeting, Moscow proposed a draft resolution calling for members to condemn the attack as a violation of international law. It also demanded the U.S. and its allies cease their aggression against Syria and provide conditions for an OPCW investigation. But after a heated encounter, the draft was quashed. Paris, Washington and London chose to ignore all calls for sanity. You have nothing but disdain for the UN Charter and the Security Council, which you are using in your illicit aims. The UN Charter wasn't conceived to protect criminals. Our action absolutely corresponds to the goals and values proclaimed in the Charter. The US and its allies continue to show blatant neglect of international law. I will take no lessons, Mr. President, in international law from Russia. You don't treat the Security Council seriously. You don't work to its guidelines. You don't talk to us and you don't consult us. The time for talk ended last night. The United States is locked and loaded. When our president draws a red line, our president enforces the red line. The U.S. says it is ready to shoot and it's locked and loaded. We are sad and concerned to hear this. We know that they have aircraft, satellites, smart missiles and a nuclear weapons arsenal. Now we also know that they have disdain for international law. We are prepared to sustain this pressure if the Syrian regime is foolish enough to test our will. Is this how you want international affairs to be conducted now? This is hooliganism, and not minor hooliganism, since we are talking about major nuclear powers. Well, people around the world have expressed their anger at the actions of the US and its allies. Hundreds marched in France, Germany and America to denounce the strikes against Syria. The United States has no right to send these airstrikes over to Syria and its allies have no right to do so either. You can't just, they can't just bomb any country that they wish. After the airstrike was launched, I couldn't, I couldn't bear the pain I was feeling and I, I couldn't just sit silently in my home knowing all that was happening. And we can and must stop Macron. What else should we do? In Parliament he doesn't listen to anybody. We only have this way to intervene. Well, we've heard from the director of the Ron Paul Institute, Daniel McAdams, who questions the logic for conducting the airstrikes. Well, it's really a matter of simple logic. If, if indeed that was the case, why not wait for an investigative body to come? If the U.S. has known it for a long time, this was a chemical weapons facility, why not notify the OPCW in the first place? 
And most of all, if this was a factory producing chemical weapons and you want to punish Assad for allegedly using chemical weapons, why would you hit a chemical weapons factory and disperse all of the sarin gas or whatever they have manufactured there along to the civilian population? Are you not doing just what you've accused Assad of doing?